Hey lifers, Dustin here, and in this video today I want to take a look at how I would fix the Atlantic Coast Conference, something that uh, is near and dear to my heart. If I had to pick a favorite conference because I grew up in Clemson country, it would probably be the ACC, and this format of the things that I want to talk about could probably fit to most of the other leagues around the country. Most of it has to do with scheduling. I do want to say that if you are already a subscriber of mine and you've checked out my videos before, welcome back. If not, and you want to see a lot of college football videos coming down the stretch, please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more videos. Now, slightly contrary to the actual title of this video, the first thing I want to talk about are the few little things that I would keep. So the first thing is I would keep two divisions. I think two competing divisions is just a nice way to do it. It sets up nicely for the, for the conference championship game, of course, I will keep. And I will keep that in Charlotte, something I did not know until I did a little bit of research for this video. It is literally in between the most northern campus in the ACC, which technically is Syracuse, and the most southern in Miami. They're both like right at 11 hours apart and within 20 or 30 miles of each other from Charlotte being the actual center between those two as far as driving. I just did a quick little Google Maps thing from Syracuse to Charlotte and Charlotte to Miami. It was kind of weird how it was right in the middle. Okay, so now to actually talk about what I would change, mostly centered around scheduling, and my biggest pet peeve in the whole world is when we started bloating out these conferences. When we started making them 12 and 14 teams and we decided on rotations and what rivalries were important and which ones were no longer important. A lot of these conferences did something that I am not a fan of, which is I think if you are in a conference with a team, theoretically, that means that everybody in that conference has the same beliefs, the same general goal. They agree on fundamentals. They like each other enough as partners to want to play each other more than they would normally. And the idea that you, as an incoming freshman at a university, will not get to play every team in your conference while you are in school there is ridiculous. For instance, Clemson will play Virginia Tech in the regular season this year. Now, of course, I can't count for conference championship games or anything like that. They are not scheduled to play the Hokies again until 2024. That, that's insane. These seven-year rotations is absolutely ridiculous. Rising seniors for the Tigers have never played Duke, and they've never played Virginia. All three of those schools, Clemson, Duke, and Virginia, were founding members of the ACC. And these players, while not the most prominent games on the schedule, I understand, but they're going to graduate having never played these two teams. Isn't that odd? So I think the very first remedy to this is one that has a lot of support and a lot of non-support, a lot of pushback, and that is expanding to nine conference games. Getting an extra conference game in allows you to go through the cycle quicker, gets to make the conference, I believe, more competitive, which is kind of what the downside is, especially for a lot of these ACC teams that already have built-in non-conference, typically SEC rivals. I understand Clemson, again, that that's the team that I'm closest to right now, they really want seven home games a year, and there is a way to still do that. They just have to work within the system, which is not something athletic directors exactly want to hear. The next thing I want to do is, if we're going to go to nine conference games in order to go through the rotation quicker, we need to eliminate the cross-division permanent rival. Now, they seem to have set these divisions up so that there's one crossover rival that will not go away, that's been, a, in a lot of cases, a main rival for this team for a while. I'm going to address that a little bit later in this video about how I would fix that, but for right now, I'm just going to say we got to get rid of it. So how would I fix the actual ACC schedule? I would do what I am starting to call the ABB-CBB schedule. Okay, that sounds kind of weird, and I'll introduce a graphic in a second to better explain it. But, say you have one team, you introduce two teams. Okay, then the next year, this team gets booted off the schedule, you bring in another team, and you play those three. Then the next year, you boot these two teams off and bring in two new. And you have a constant rotation. Okay, it's a little convoluted, so here's the graphic, and I'll use Florida State as an example. 
So I'm just going to make up where we start because this would have to be something that would be beneficial for everybody in the conference. So you'd have to actually sit down and go it over. But we'll start with this year, 2017, and we'll say that Florida State would go to Pittsburgh, have a home game against Virginia Tech, and travel to Virginia. So in this format, we'll say that it is Pittsburgh's, quote, second year. Obviously, it's the first year in this program, but it's their second year in rotation. It's Virginia Tech and Virginia's first year. So in 2018, we'll kick Pittsburgh off. We'll bring in North Carolina, and now Virginia Tech and Virginia, we switch their home at home. So now we have a home game against North Carolina, a road trip to Virginia Tech, and a home game against Virginia. Now, when we go to 2019, it is now the second year for North Carolina. So we're going to have a road game to North Carolina. Now we kick out Virginia Tech and Virginia, and we bring in two new teams, and we will say those are Duke and Georgia Tech. Now, in 2020, it'll be Duke and Georgia Tech's second season on the rotation. We'll flip the home and home, and we'll introduce Miami in this case. In four years, Florida State has played Pittsburgh, Virginia Tech, Virginia, North Carolina, Duke, Georgia Tech, and Miami. If you are a graduating senior, you will play every single team in the conference. Now, because of the size of the conference, you won't get a true home and home with each conference member while you're at school there, but I think this is my solution to the best way to play all four teams and kind of keep it fair. This way, you get a home and home with every team every five years instead of the 10 years that the current ACC schedule shows. Okay, so we have that down. If you were mad about the ending the rivalry with Miami and Florida State or Clemson and Georgia Tech or North Carolina NC State when we got rid of the permanent crossover rivals, Here's my idea for redemption, and I know this is going to be controversial, and I know I'm going to get pushback, but hear me out. I think the ACC should redraw the divisions. When these divisions were split up in 2005, the idea was balance. Well, the balance has kind of shifted, which for the short term won't really be fixed under my plan, and I understand that. But it was also made when Maryland was in the ACC and Syracuse, Pittsburgh, and Louisville were slugging it away in the Big East. The ACC was founded as a Southern Conference. And a lot of the original members, and I can tell you from talking to these fan bases over the years, a lot of them have, have kind of been like, oh, Boston College. When Boston College and Virginia Tech came in the ACC, they were like, I mean, okay. It's kind of weird. Boston College and the ACC? Yeah. Syracuse and Pittsburgh, people were like, in the, in the ACC? The sentiment around here, especially in the Carolinas, was that this is, it always has been a Southern Conference. That's partly why the ACC's biggest nemesis in the whole world is the SEC, the team that claims they actually are the Conference of the South. The ACC, I felt, has always had kind of a rub against them. What better way to prove that than splitting the divisions between North and South? In a weird way, this is going to look a lot like the Big East versus the ACC, but here's how I have it. In the North, you would have Boston College, Louisville, Pittsburgh, Syracuse, Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest. Sorry, Deacons. You're technically the most northern school in North Carolina, and I've just always felt like NC State, North Carolina, and Duke had more tradition between themselves and better rivalries, and you were always kind of the fourth team there. In the South... And again, hear me out, is Clemson, Duke, Florida State, Georgia Tech, Miami, NC State, and North Carolina. I know, I know, the South is really top-heavy. The South has Clemson and Florida State, and then teams that can make a ruckus in Miami and North Carolina and Georgia Tech and NC State. And the North has Louisville and Virginia Tech, two teams that are trying to, to climb that mountain, and they've... They're getting really, really good. I think each of those teams will win the ACC Conference Championship within the next five years. But under them, maybe a Pittsburgh every once in a while. Pittsburgh is a really stout team when they try and don't lose to Northwestern in a bowl game. But for the most part, it would be a South-dominated conference at first. When I was growing up, I couldn't tell you every team that was in the SEC West. I just couldn't. 
I knew every team that was in the SEC East because it was dominated by Florida and Tennessee and Georgia. I watched so many Florida, Tennessee, Georgia games growing up. I didn't watch LSU games. I didn't watch Arkansas games. The West Division didn't matter as much in the 90s. Certainly not what it did in the 2000s because the West has dominated that conference for over a decade now. Only one conference championship has been won by the East since 2007 and that was the 2008 National Champion Florida Gators. What I'm saying is, yes, the South may be really tough now. Maybe the champions of the conference for now and maybe the next few years to come. But it won't always be that way. Power always shifts. The North will rise again. I truly believe that. And I also believe that maybe you should redraw the divisions every few years or so if you really want to keep pure balance. Because balance isn't real. It's going to shift kind of wildly from division to division over the next 20, 30, 40 years. So I'm really curious to see what you guys think about my plan with 14 teams in this division. The same, obviously the same ABB, CBB kind of scheduling would take place there with no crossovers, no permanent rivals. You would just fluctuate throughout the teams because really all of those crossover rivals, for the most part, are still kept intact by who you play in your division. Miami still plays Florida State, North Carolina, NC State, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, Duke, we're losing, but are we losing that? But what if the ACC decides, you know what? It's time to set a trend. We're going to be the first super conference, and we're going to go to 16 teams. What would the schedule look like then? Now, it is kind of hard to guess who the ACC would add, especially since it's not just football, especially in the ACC. They also are very concerned about academics and, you know, making sure they, they, the college passes a certain GPA and kind of cultural fit as far as academics and APR goes. They also are a basketball conference. Let's be real. The ACC values basketball more than probably any other Power 5 team at this point. So, I don't know. They may change their direction with this, but I'm assuming if they decide, hey, we're going into a super conference and the landscape starts shifting once again, that will force Notre Dame to finally break down because they are kind of contractually obligated. If they have to join a conference, they have to join the ACC. So, they finally break down. They join the ACC. Who's the 16th member? I can see, and again, I don't know the academics that well. But I can see uh, Navy. I, I know UConn's academics weren't as great as I thought they would be. Uh, apparently West Virginia went to the Big 12 after getting notification they would not be a part of the ACC. Um, I'm going to say in this scenario that the ACC gets Navy and Notre Dame. Now in this scenario, I would still keep the North-South split. I would put Notre Dame and Navy in the North and move Wake Forest down to the South. Congratulations, Deeks. You're Southerners again. And I will put the divisional split at the North Carolina-Virginia border. Now, the only way I know how to do this is for each team to have a tethered, paired team within their own division that they would travel with. So, a lot of those are going to be the traditional crossover rivals we used to have. So, for instance, Clemson and Georgia Tech would be paired together. So, they would be the A group, and they would go through the schedule together. So Clemson and Georgia Tech would face the same two non-divisions, so the same two northern teams each year, flipping the home and away. So it's a little confusing, so there's a graphic here. So in this list, I have Clemson and Georgia Tech as partners, Duke and Wake Forest, Florida State, Miami, NC State, North Carolina in the north. You have Boston College and Notre Dame, Navy and Louisville, just because that's kind of where Navy takes over, I guess, Maryland's position. You have Pittsburgh and Syracuse and Virginia and Virginia Tech. Each year, the teams would play their pairings from the other division, and within four years, you will play every single team in the conference, barring, of course, a conference championship game anyway, you will not be able to do the home and home. So there's just not enough room in the schedule. There's too many teams. This conference is ridiculous. For the record, I would have kept it at 12 teams, but 
We're past that now. You're going to get to play every single team in your conference, and every eight years, you're going to get a home and home with each team, which is ridiculous that in this scenario, it's still eight years compared to ten with the way we have it now. And there's more teams. Doesn't make any sense. Also, as just an aside, if I was the conference commissioner, I would say that we're pretty much done with FCS teams with uh, Division One AA. I would go the route of, I believe, the Big Ten and saying we're not going to schedule them as much anymore. If you wanted to keep some of these rivalries going for some reason, you could do what North Carolina and Wake Forest plan to do in the 2019 season, and you could face a team from your conference in a non-conference game. I think that's a pretty neat idea and a way to keep the rivalries going in years when you're not scheduled to play each other. Also, this is just my own bias, and I understand it's never going to happen, but I really want an ACC-SEC challenge. Each conference at this point has 14 teams, and about half the conference already has a built-in rival from the SEC. I would like each team to just schedule an SEC team and... There could be a big trophy at the end, because everyone likes big trophies. And whichever team won more games, and or whichever conference won more games against the other conference, gets a big trophy and gets to rub it in the, uh, the other conference's faces. Especially after the bowl season, when there's a lot of ACC-SEC matchups. And it would be fun, and then it would just create better rivalry. And, uh, I like trophies. So again, guys, that is my not-so-brief, brief... brief fix to the scheduling for the ACC. Again, I don't really think this is an ACC problem as far as the scheduling as much as it is a lot of the other conferences. I think the SEC could very easily do this. I think the Big Ten could very easily do this. So I put how to fix the ACC because I made it ACC centric and talked a lot about the rivalries, but it could really mean any of the other conferences as well. As always, I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say about it. Most of these videos you guys tend to disagree with me on, which is perfectly fine. I love hearing what you guys have to say, so do not be afraid uh, to let me know down in the comment section how bad of an idea it is, how much it won't work, how much you'll miss certain things about it. All those are perfectly fine. This is just me kind of bloviating about ways in order to get every team to play every other team in the conference in a four-year span because I think that's important. I think that's what makes it a conference. There's also been the idea, especially if you go to 16 teams, to do what the WAC did in the late 90s and go to four sets of pods. So let me know what you think about that because, for instance, I believe one pod would probably be Miami, Florida State, Georgia Tech, and Clemson. So depending on the year, that could be quite the uh, hellscape of a pod for those teams. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. You can also click the trophy circle right there in order to subscribe and see more videos or click one of the videos YouTube has suggested over to your right. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, until next time. The most northern campus in the ACC, which technically is Syracuse, and the most southern in Miami. They're both like right at 11 hours apart and within 20 or 30 miles of each other from Charlotte being the actual center between those two as far as driving. I just did a quick little Google Maps thing from Syracuse to Charlotte and Charlotte to Miami. Hey lifers, Dustin here. And in this video today, I want to take a look at how I would fix the Atlantic Coast Conference, something that uh, is near and dear to my heart. If I had to pick a favorite conference because I grew up in Clemson country, it would probably be the ACC. And this format of the things that I want to talk about could probably fit to most of the other leagues around the country. Most of it has to do with scheduling. I do want to say that if you are already a subscriber of mine and you've checked out my videos before, welcome back. If not, and you want to see a lot of college football videos coming down the stretch, please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more videos. Now, slightly contrary to the actual title of this video, the first thing I want to talk about, it was kind of weird how it was right in the middle. Okay, so now to actually talk about what I would change, mostly centered around scheduling, and my biggest pet peeve in the whole world is when we started bloating out these conferences, when we started making them 12 and 14 teams and we decided on rotations and what rivalries were important and which ones were no longer about are the few little things that I would keep. 
So the first thing is I would keep two divisions. I think two competing divisions is just a nice way to do it. It sets up nicely for the for the conference championship game, of course, I will keep. And I will keep that in Charlotte, something I did not know until I did a little bit of research for this video. It is literally in between 